Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to continue this Mars Lander mission and Sample Return mission of course. And it has been a while since I posted a video in this series and that is because of other activities obviously. But I do intend to attempt to complete this mission and do other things. So yeah, uh, the first consideration is that we needed to correct our course to Mars. And so you see here I have plotted an 8.3 meter per second correction burn, uh, taking us from this 14,000 kilometer orbit to this much closer orbit, and also going in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, no particular reason for the counterclockwise direction, I guess. Um, maybe that's not such a good idea. Now the important thing is we will clearly be in an orbit that will be covered by the by the target, the return stage, and so yeah, we'll have a ability to line up with the return stage and rendezvous, so that's good. That's probably the first and most important thing to to ensure. So we'll have a potential point there, and probably one over here is more likely to be where we'll land, and that will be a good place to do things from. But uh, so we'll have to see about those details when we get there. The question is whether I use the RL-10s or the RCS. I don't think I have enough RCS to do 8.3 meters per second on the correction and I notice coming up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down two of the RL-10s so I don't have as much thrust. Okay, and then let me uh, turn to the maneuver node as quickly as possible. Uh, without any help, thank you. Well, this is not going to be as accurate as I would like because we're taking our time to turn towards the node. We should still have plenty of ignitions on the RL-10s. And I guess in theory we could switch the other two RL-10s to do other things. Okay, selling the fuel down. and ignition. Alright, let's see what that did. Hmm, not quite what I wanted. Okay, that's correcting it. I'm just using RCS now. Bringing the periapsis in, hopefully. Nope, that seems to be a limit on... oh boy. In that direction. Oh, SAS was fighting against me, that's why. Okay. Okay, we're drifting over here. And we've ended up rather more inclined than I wanted to. I'm gonna let this drift to another node and then another one of the markers and then correct the rest. When it's in the middle here, it's not very good to try to make an RCS correction. It's not quite the orbit I was looking for. But it is a good periapsis. We don't have to meet up with the return vehicle until we take off again. I guess this might be alright. Okay, well, anyway, we're on our way to Mars. We've got fuel and such. Gotta just disengage RCS. No particular problem with spinning around. But I guess just for aesthetic reasons I should uh, stabilize this. Alright, uh, actually let's stop it right there. That looks stable. Okay, let us proceed. We don't need a mid-course plane change. Now that little bit of a turn brought us a little bit higher. We'll correct that once we get into Mars SOI, I think. It's too touchy from out here. Okay, now as far as our drain is concerned, that's because we're on the nighttime side. We've got solar panels out. This is probably not the best orientation for them. Let's get into the daylight and see how we are facing or not facing the sun. Right, so well, we, we are getting enough input, but this is not the best orientation.
Now, some of the electricity drain will turn off because the probe zone cores go into low power mode. So that'll be good. No, no, don't go retrograde. Just stay there. Okay. That looks stable. Now let's continue. Out of Earth SOI. Uh, let's be legit about this. It thinks we've lost communication. Of course we have local control with the probe core, but I can uh, I should tune an antenna to Earth. We shouldn't be losing communication. Okay, so here we go. We're, we're on a pretty fast approach to Mars actually, looking at our orbit. It's only a uh, less than two year orbital period. Taking a look at Mars after crossing into Kerbal SOI, our periapsis is much higher now. Oh wait, was uh, which way was the return stage orbiting Mars? We might be on the wrong side. No, we're on the right side. Yeah, we're we're coming in from here, going out through there. Not, I mean, we're gonna land anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Well, let's see what happens. We, we are carrying some fuel to make corrections over there. Let's go ahead and... Well, let's see how much of the fuel b boils off. We've got 377 meters per second right now, 4,044 units of liquid hydrogen. Let's proceed. And also we have to watch our electric charge. Uh, well, there goes the electric charge. Okay. Yep, we're flush to the sun instead of tail first towards it. Okay. Okay, well, that should do the trick for now. Probably have to make some further corrections later. Oh, we're losing charge again. Hmm. This time, I don't know if I can save it. Seems to be... This isn't right. Do we have... Okay, we've got that tuned to Kerbin. Maybe we'll just go with local control until we get there. Maybe deactivating this will help? Doesn't seem to. Generation and drain are unchanged. Though this says... Maybe, maybe it is uh, causing a problem. Because it says 0.18 charge per second and this isn't reading at all. I'm gonna deactivate this antenna. We'll activate it again once we get there. Well, that's the best I can do. Now we're going to go into low power mode with the other cores, so hopefully that'll help. We are 44 days from our target. Yeah, there's low power mode. And we are recovering electric charge. We've lost about 100 meters per second on the boil off, about 1,000 units of liquid hydrogen. Uh, this is not good. If I risk turning off these cores completely, that might cause a problem. I mean, that has caused problems before. Obviously, we could just rely on the local control from the early Saturn instrument unit. But possibly if I try to disable these cores, we might not have any control afterwards. Funny, I thought this uh, this sort of setup worked pretty well last time. We used sort of the same stage, I guess. Some core or another is using more juice than the f than I had on the previous probe. Thought we had the same sort of core cores working for us. I mean, I I know we had the same upper probe. What if I toggle power here? Will it doom the mission? Required power is only 0.02. For some reason I can't click on the hex. I'm trying to. 
Okay, now, there we go. Require power 0.02. That's fine. Uh, I think there's uh, another probe core up here. This is one of the dastardly early controllable cores. Require power 0.02. It's really just this that is causing the problem. Maybe we could try to aim the whole thing properly. Go straight down and hope for the best. And then dump this portion, but then if we dump this portion we don't have the solar panels, so that's a no-go. I'm gonna lock the battery on the upper cores. Gotta play that trick. I have no choice. I'm even gonna lock the battery on the Saturn instrument unit. We're, we'll unlock it once we get there. Yep. Alright, so we're playing that trick. Because otherwise we're gonna be in trouble anyway. I don't know if that'll work with remote tech and all this. Generally don't do this sort of thing. Okay, Duna Periapsis is not that bad right now. Let's see if we have control when we unlock the power now. Yeah, we do. Only 14 hours though. Uh, maybe I shouldn't unlock all of them yet. We might need to lock them again. Uh, it looks like a whole day before we get in. What's our situation with respect to the sun? Tail still facing it, so we're getting as much sunlight as we're gonna get. Okay, well. Got RCS enabled. We're not exactly in line with anything at all, but I guess we'll try and land around here somewhere, if possible. But let me try and bring the orbit in a little bit. We're going pretty fast, so I'm going to aim for 50 kilometers. Okay, well that's 50. Or less. Darn it, not less. Stop trying to correct. Okay. Now I'm going to try and use very little RCS to get to the retrograde point, but let, let me wait until I get closer. Okay. So we've turned, which means we're not getting as much sunlight. We've got to lock the batteries again, and then we'll get closer, and then try this stuff again. This is what it has come down to. Oops. Come on, probe core. Funny that the hex doesn't want to light up. There's something wrong with its... Pointing at it. Yep, something wrong with its activation box somehow. I mean, here we've got the Agena AVX package highlighting fine, but everything above here seems to not want to highlight properly. No. And actually, the RCS. Oh, there, there we go. Sheesh. All right, locking power there. Doesn't matter what our orientation is right now, we're going to end up turning to retrograde later. So let me just get in. Okay, 30 minutes to periapsis. We've acquired Angua M. That's nice. So no connection because we haven't activated our core. So let's give this one power. That gives us local control anyway. And got to turn to retrograde. Frankly, at this point, if I actually manage to land this thing, that will be somewhat of a win. Getting it back to orbit would be a plus. Okay, camera change. Sounds like a good, good time to bring in the solar panels. Come on. And we'll lock retrograde here. Okay, there we go. Solar panels in. 
Okay, here's the atmosphere, and again, we are going to need some of the fuel from this stage to make corrections if, for instance, we don't get into orbit. So uh, that's why we're having it hang out. I don't know whether it's going to survive this or not. But we're also using its fuel to make sure that we are stable. As you can see, it's using all that. I'm going to put it on fine controls right now. might be necessary to take it off of that eventually. We've only got three hours worth of charge and the solar panels are closed. If this is successful, maybe we should leave it in orbit around Mars for a little bit and recharge it fully before trying to bring the lander down. We are going very fast. We are going double the orbital speed, more than double the orbital speed of Mars. I don't know if this got to be enough to capture us. I'm also not sure that we can survive this, going 8,000 meters per second right now. Uh, I guess I'll just focus on the engines to see what the temperature is. Orientation seems fine even though we're on fine controls. Negative 80 degrees Celsius and increasing. Okay, I'm going to take it off of fine controls at this point. We are deviating away from retrograde here. Let me try and help it out. Uh, it looks like we're flipping around. Looks like the Saturn instrumentation here and the engines and all aren't enough to... Yeah, the center of mass is bad because of the lander being heavy. Oh, it's just flipping around and around. Certainly, this has not been a very nominal approach to Mars. And I'm going to take the RCS off. It's not doing anything useful right now. We are inevitably going to be catching a little bit more drag than I expected. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe not. We're still not captured, but we're also still not at periapsis. We've lost some speed. Not enough though. Tough to decide what part I should focus on in terms of getting the temperature, but the main tank is 180 degrees Celsius and increasing. The probe, roughly 80 degrees Celsius it looks like on the Ranger Block 3 core. Thrust plate multi adapter is relatively cool. Saturn instrumentation unit, cool. Main tank uh, around 200 degrees Celsius right now, approaching periapsis. We've now passed periapsis. We are not anywhere near orbit. We've burned off about 1300 meters per second. We need to burn off another 2600 if we want to make orbit, I think. Temperature's holding around 200 degrees Celsius. It should be fine on the temperatures. We are still not in orbit. We're at 54 kilometers in altitude. We're not burning off very much speed. I think in the end, the quick trajectory that we are on is going to be our undoing here. Yep, yeah, um, things are getting mild, but uh, we're we're still on our way out, and we only have 235 meters per second to correct that, which I don't think is gonna be enough. You can see the difference between our current orbit and the Martian orbit. It's a long, big gap to try and close. could try forcing it to retrograde here when the atmosphere is thin, but no, it doesn't seem to want to obey. OK, 
Okay. I mean, of course, the, the quicker we do this burn, the better, but I can't turn to retrograde right now. I suppose we could separate the lander and at least bring it down. Just to check that situation out. We, we're not in communication with any of the satellites, though. And this won't be in communication with Earth. Not until we get over here. So, yeah, if we try to separate the lander right now, we would lose control. And, of course, we have to turn on the power on it, too. Okay, uh, looks like we can turn to retrograde now. I'm just going to expend this stage as much as possible. Okay, and ignition. Okay, that's the end of that. We'll let the little thrusters... Well, hold on. We'll, we'll save some of the thruster energy for later. Okay, um, we are in space, so let's get the solar panels out for the heck of it. Activate that reflectron. This is still activated. We don't have much electric charge for our upper probe. Anyway, let's get it uh, to where communication is a thing. And I want direct communication possible. It's funny, we should have a direct line of sight right now. Oh, we lost electric charge on this core. Hmm. Well, heck. Let's see if these little antennae can connect to that guy, Angua M, and use that to get us, try to slow us down into orbit. Looks like that's our best bet. Okay, so I'm unlocking the power on these upper ones. They have no way of recharging themselves. And... Well... Yep, uh, I'm just gonna set... Nope, we have no connection. I thought those were active. I had reactivated. Well, that one's active. There's a line to that one, but I guess it's not good enough. We've got the electric charge. That's operational. Oh, wait, uh, we've got... Oh, no. We had connection for a brief minute while time warping, but we do not have connection now. We're all the way out here now. I mean, it's one of those things where I change to here and go back and it has connection? No. Okay, well, it looks like uh, this was a bust in many different ways. And I'm going to have to rethink this whole mission. And people have suggested totally different lander. I think that is probably going to be the case. So we're not going to have this sort of this sort of plan again. Oh, it does have solar panels. Well, that's a plus. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do anything with them. I wonder why it should have... Let's see, where is it? We're over here. No, I guess it's too far out for those little probes around Mars to help. Yeah, it's done for. Oh, we were trying to land there. Now I remember. Maybe next time we'll do something completely different. So, we've got two things on the back burner right now. We've got a crewed landing and return mission from the moon. We've got this probe sample return mission with Mars. I can't build a bigger rocket. The game crashes when I try to launch anything larger than the Shakti rocket. So let's just put that out there. Um, but I think maybe an interplanetary mission further out might be a thing to do. We haven't tried that. We haven't uh, gone further than further than Mars, I think. I don't think... I don't remember if we've been to Jupiter in this. It's been a long time. That might be a good change of pace for me. Anyway, that's just a thought. I'll uh, get your input in the comments, so uh, if you have any ideas, please 
Leave them in the comment section. Clearly we need more solar panelry, which as amazing as that sounds. It could be that that's just the way to fix this. We could just add more solar panels and then fly it again. So I'll get your input in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like and I'll see you next time.